Now, in, in mathematical communities, we oftentimes sort of try to use the same letters for inputs all the time. We try to always use X's for inputs, we try to use Y's in our output. And so oftentimes, and, and the book does this as well, what we'll do is instead of writing it as G of Y equals Y squared, we'll actually write this as F inverse of X. It's a notational convention, something that you should get used to. Whenever we're talking about inverse functions, this is the notation that we use. We often switch back to the uh, x variable just because it's convenient. But notationally, this is the notation you're going to see for the inverse function. Don't let this little negative one exponent here, don't start thinking about that in terms of, oh, negative one exponent, that means one over x. That's, no, 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 no. That will never be the case here, okay? If I want to put a negative exponent on a function like this and mean one over x, I'm gonna put like brackets around it and put the negative one on the outside of the brackets, okay? This notation just means the inverse of x. This is not one over x. Alright, so, we have our inverse function. Now, we need to identify domain and range of these things. Okay? What's the domain of f of x? Our domain for f of x is 0 to infinity, right? I can put anything non-negative into our square root function and get something meaningful. Alright, so that means that this, zero to one, zero to infinity, is equal to the range of f inverse of x, right? That's the relationship that we have over here amongst a function and its inverse. All right, good. Now, what about the domain of f inverse? What values can I plug in to my f inverse function? Okay. This is a. Um, I'm, you're, sorry, you're incorrect. It happens. It's okay. Um, it's easy to think that. It's easy to think based on the equation that we're given for f inverse that the domain of this function is any real number I want it to be. But, we have to go back and remember, this is a function that we obtained from a different function. This is the inverse function that came from this as our starting point. We started with this. We did some manipulation and got out this inverse. But this inverse has to still obey these rules over here. We have to obey these rules over here. So, the domain of f inverse here is equal to the output values of this function. What outputs do I get from the square root function? The only thing I get from the square root function are all the non-negative real numbers. So that would be from 0 to infinity, which is our range. get outputs like this, and it's easy to try to just utilize the <coughs> function's appearance to identify the domain. But we have to remember the inverse function has to obey those inputs that came from the outputs of f of x. Okay? And so if we graph this, if we graph the function at its inverse, I'll do two different colors here. The original function I'll do in black y equals f of x. First, 